Okay, we do be back with another tutorial. And this time it's time for crow dancing with uh, Nina Nesbitt. Yeah, and Nina and the two other writers, Anton and Julia, are gonna have a little part in the video. So we're gonna show how, how like they wrote everything in their session and whatever. So let's get to them and we'll be back soon. See you in a GIF. Hi! Hi! So we wrote Cry Dancing uh, back in February 2020. Um, uh, before, actually the week before all the corona stuff <laughs> erupted yeah. around the world. Um, yeah, it felt like kind of like a weird time. Um, actually, I was in Sweden. Um, I'm half Swedish, so I've been spending a bit of time there writing the next record and I had a session with Julian Anton and I really wanted to sort of do something that paid tribute to Swedish pop music. Um, I'm a big fan of people like Robin um, I love like that sort of synth pop like feel good but also really emotional lyric. Um, so we kind of were inspired by that on the day and Anton you started some chords, you got a synth out. Yeah, I think, I if like, I remember yeah. correctly, I think I bought like a new synth that has been a favorite for a lot of our artists. It's like an old analog synth that was just, we found some cool pad and some nice chords to start things off. And obviously I was yeah. inspired, me and Julia started saying things. Yeah, and I also remember like you went to the bathroom and when you came back, you were really excited because you had this lyric idea. You were like, guys, what do you think about this? Like, cry dancing. Like, this girl going out, so heartbroken. But she doing, like, all she can to not make anyone see that. And like, yeah. no, I'm fine. I feel like in my group of girls, if we have a night out, like... There's usually one crying by the end of the night. <laughs> like <it's always> <laughs> We've all been there. Definitely been me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and you're like, no, no, no. It's not him. It's, not him. it's, it's like, the shot like really got me. Or like, you'll make an excuse. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know if it's a Swedish thing as well. I feel like it is. But in Britain, it's very like, Oh no, like no, it's a sweet right. as well. Like, so your problems. <laughs> um very unhealthy. Yeah. But um yeah, it's a song about that. It's like going out and getting drunk and having a great time, but also just like actually being very sad. Um very sad. Now I listen back it, to the yeah. lyrics and I'm like, one of the lyrics is um maybe I'm just PMSing or the world is too depressing. Yeah. I feel like the audacity we had to write about the world being depressing before all this started. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it's the perfect time. Oh, yeah, we we didn't that. know anything. <laughs> and I remember that you came up with the hook melody, like the... <laughs> I was like, I love that. It, so, it, just, it all just felt together like so fast it was like this kind of song that just wrote itself in a way like it, yeah. it like i feel like every line was so fun to write and my favorite line yeah. is the uh i swear every weekend must be allergy season yeah i like that one <laughs> um and yeah i feel like we got it to a really good point and i was kind of thinking for my record it could have been cool um and then all this happened with like yeah. corona so it kind of got pushed Take back over. Yeah, and then Noted heard the song, and I always thought like it's quite upbeat for me, like as my artist. Like, yeah, it's the perfect kind of um, mixture of things. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I when uh, I remember we had like a good, uh, good like uh, demo when you left. I remember, and I, I remember we. I didn't think about like a, like a producer act like no. I I didn't think about that. It was just like trying to make something upbeat, more like Robin yeah. style, yeah. Uh, instead of, uh, because we've done a lot of like half tempo stuff and uh, just want to have like some like four on the floor. And then uh, yeah. I remember like that was, that hook is so good at so came up and we followed that with the strings, I remember. It was really, yeah. uh, made it stand out really, it was cool. I like that they keep, kept it in there and yeah it just makes me want to jump about a field and like have an emotion. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is very That's yeah it's fun. real nice i played it for a couple of friends and they were like 
oh, I want to run to this. I want to <laughs> just go out and run, run and cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah run and cry. Right, run. <laughs> but yeah, sweet. Bye. Bye. And now we do be back again, and we're gonna get into the production. Yeah. So here we have a project, a big project. As always, we're gonna mute the beautiful vocal for this uh, tutorial. So the song starts with some ambient sounds, which is down here. Some uh, roller coasters, some ocean, some what is the most? Yeah, I don't know what you call Seagull, this bird. Seagulls, think, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and like we we really wanted to set the mood, like that you like out on Venice Pier. No, not Venice Pier, Santa Monica Pier. Like you hear the roller coaster, you hear the seagulls, and like yeah. people talk or whatever, just to like get the mood for the track exactly. a little. So it's those ambient sounds together with the, this sound, which is sound from uh, Analog Lab. Um, wait, here's the sound. We didn't do anything to the sound. Um, except some EQ and some compressor for sidechain later on in the track. Some kickstart also for sidechain <laughs> and this uh, filter and also the pan man. So you pan the man. <laughs> pan the man. <laughs> so yeah, that's this sound and it goes basically as you can see through the whole track. Um, so yeah, that's the intro. Basically, then we come into the verse, and we also have this little transition into the verse. <laughs> so we have a pad playing in the beginning. Uh, it's a serum preset that we made. Looks like this. Very nice. Very nice. Very yeah. simple preset. So yeah, that's this part playing just the chords. Right here. Some EQ and uh, the kickstart in the drop. Uh, and then this sound as we showed before. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it, I think. We also have this guitar, which is like super filtered down. It's just a loop from Splice. And, uh, uh, and we added like a drum shaper on this just to take down the attack without oh, no difference. <laughs> um, and some EQ. Um, and then we have. Uh, now we. Nothing more on this part. Then later on, it comes in a clap. So it's this clap layered with like a wide clap to get the stereo. Yeah, it's always nice to use a wide clap. Yeah, like a lot. Not it can be like time. really low, as you see. This yeah. is like a lot lower than the main clap, but it's just nice to get yeah, it. to get like the more. stereo image. Like exactly. So, to get it sounds like this. So this is the pre-chorus, I think, yeah, it is. Um, wait, I'm lost in the project. Yes, I was so messy in the project, like, I don't know where to find anything when I'm done with it. <laughs> no, but so the main thing that comes in is all these, like, chord stabs, I would say. So it's first this one, and it's a serum preset um, that we made. Um, looks like this with some reverb. Without the reverb, it sounds like this. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. Here. Um, and we can kick start and some OTT to make it like brighter, I guess. And some EQ. And then we have uh, 
this one. This is a really weird sound, but it's from the beginning we used it like more as a bass, but then we made chords with it and it sounded pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't sound good by itself, but in the mix it sounds good. So we have a bunch of distortion on this one, um, and then uh, the reverb, some EQ, and kickstart. That sounds like this. Those those two sound the sounds together sound like this. And as we said before, it's really like we're in a bunch of these tutorials. Is that stuff doesn't have to sound good by itself, no. but it can sound really good like in the mix. So yeah. keep that in mind. Put in shitty stuff and it will sound good. <laughs> exactly. And then we have the, this sound, which is like a just like a tonal thing from the cashmere pack um, and we added a bunch of reverb and some echo and some uh, delay and then we just pitched like each of these different so it's together with the chords it sounds like um, this nice um, and then this one, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, this is like the same sounds. Um, so, we just took like a serum preset and added like a bunch of distortion and reverb and played like those two notes oh, 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 with like some glide on it. So, the notes glide into each other. Yeah. And then bounced, bounced it out, and it sounds like this. So yeah, that's the chord stuff that comes in. Um, we also have this bass coming in. It's a serum preset. It's always, always using serum. Serum is the best. Uh, so it looks like this with some kickstart. Uh, EQ, decapitator, um, some uh, distortion, and uh, another EQ. Because you can't do too many EQs. <laughs> we also have these ARPs coming in. Serum once again. Yeah. So it's this ARP. It's from Singular Sounds. I think we changed it a little bit so it sounds more like plucky. Um, and also this one. So it's the same sounds playing different parts. Um, and that's it for the pre-chorus, pre -chorus, I think. We also have, as usual, some sweep ups and stuff like that. Sweep ups and sweep downs and uh, impacts. So yeah, let's jump into the chorus. Um, oh, I actually forgot this one. It's it's just like a splice loop. It's a guitar. Um, Leno, Leno the man. Leno the man. Um, and we filter it up a little bit and added some reverb, echo boy, and some EQ. So yeah, now let's jump into the chorus. And yeah, like the before here, there's like a like kind of a break. Yeah, it's a pretty long break. Because it's like a lot going on in the pre-chorus there, so we just wanted to make sure like the dro uh, like drop of chorus gets this, yeah. like a bigger impact, so then we just like, okay, cut some stuff here. Yeah, so and we took away like the bass and uh, like some, some of the chords um, and the drums, and, like the claps and stuff. So it sounds like this. <laughs> And this uh, sound that we showed, showed earlier almost sounds like a sweep up into the drop, which is pretty cool. Okay, so maybe start with the drums for this. So uh, the kick, it's a four, four on the floor track, so yeah, 
<laughs> so it's uh, yeah, just a four on the floor kick. <laughs> yeah. So it's this uh, kick is from uh, the binder on that. Oh, maybe this is like the top kick. Maybe this is like the main kick then. So this we use this like as a top kick, and then this is like the main kick. The top kick is for uh, really getting the punch. So yeah. Really here the kick. So those two together, and also this one, another top kick, which is like really a super kick. Cup top yeah. kick. So all together, like really punchy. Um, then layered with some acoustic drum loops, just to get like because this song has like a really organic feel in my opinion with like yeah. drums and guitars and bass and stuff like that so just to enhance that feeling we okay. added some acoustic drum loops so we also have some uh, toms playing like it's a loop and like some one shots playing like some feels and on the loop we have this to give it like some more attack and some less sustain so it sounds like a li little bit tighter and uh, this tones with some uh, OTT and some reverb um, so now we have this and then we have some more percussions it's uh, like a high up loop more oh it's not a high it's like a sh shaker or a tambourine um yeah i'm just gonna play all and uh, we also have claps um so this is from the verse and then we have really fast <laughs> Just to get like that uh, rhythm, it's like more stuff. It's like basically nothing on on this. It's just some EQ. So here's like the high end. It starts with just like the closed high end, and then we added the bit high end. And I think that's it for the drums. Yeah, it should be. So all the drums together sounds like this. Groovy. All right. Then we have the chord stabs, but that's the same as before. But only difference is now you can hear these bells. So it's two different bells from Omnisphere. Just like panned uh, left and right a little bit, I think. I don't know. But it's two different sounds with some EQ on it. Um, so yeah, that's it for the chord stabs. And we have the bass. So we have three different basses. It's this one, which is like a sub. And then this one, which is more like a analog synth sound. It's this preset with some EQ and some kickstart. And also this one, uh, which is a uh, trillion, which plays like faster than the others too, so you get like that rhythm. Mm. So yeah, that's the basis. The computer is lagging a little bit. I'm yeah, sorry. It's a, it's a big project. Yeah, and then we have the pad and oh oh yeah, also this arc. Yeah, so this is also like an analog ARP. I don't yeah. know anything about this, but it's a <laughs> it looks sick at least. Yeah, and uh, some EQ, some more EQ, the filter and sidechain. And then we have the effects stuff. And I think that's about it.
Also, we have like a ton of guitars down here. Uh, and we recorded this uh, in a different project. It's because latency problems in Ableton, you know. I will show now how we played like a few of those parts. Um, so yeah, and the first chorus is pretty short, it's just like the vocal and in the second chorus we have like the B hook or whatever. So now it goes right into the second verse. Yeah, at first we had like that uh, hook thing, da 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 da, yeah. and we felt like it was too long. So we were like, okay, how can we shorten it? So we just took that part out and yeah. went into the second verse instead. Exactly. So the second verse is pretty similar to the chorus, actually. We just took away like all of these uh, big chord stabs, so it's more like it's the bass and drums playing. Um, except this one, which comes uh, on the third chord, I think. But otherwise, otherwise, it's just like the bass. And ambience and, and uh, yeah the drums yeah so you already heard like all of the sounds so I'm not gonna talk about that more <laughs> um, and then it goes into the second uh, chorus and we have some uh, beautiful dubs dubs yeah by Toby because yeah. we just wanted that line to like be a bit more powerful. So I just sang my lungs out. Yeah, and we also have some uh, uh, guitars here. And this is guitars. So it's just like like a guitar. And this one that plays more like some. Or like some random stuff. And then before the chorus, we have uh, this also. Just to like really get those chords, you know. All about the chords. Yeah, and then the chorus again, which is the same, but we go goes, but it goes right into the B hook as we talked about before. And um, and here we have uh, a like lot the, of more new guitars as well. Yeah, a lot of more new guitars. So. The, we did like all of this around the vocal thing. I'm just, just oh my god! I, I yeah. So underneath that we added like some vocal shops, kind of. Um, so yeah, this one with some uh, little, uh, little uh, alter boy reverb. Um, yeah, EQ in this one to make it like a little bit tight, I guess. So more reverb, EQ, OTT. I mean, you can see all of this. Um, it's the same like as we do all the time. And then, uh, yeah, as Toby said, like a lot of guitars. So it's just like a lot of different layers with like different sounds. And we will show how we play all of this. Um, and also this like... And that's like a lot of different sounds just playing that part. Yeah, to really point out the... Da, da, yeah, and that's like cry dancing. dancing. And that's like the main... That's like yeah, the title of the yeah. song. <laughs> <laughs> and then on like the cry dancing we have like a bunch of uh, harmonies like and like stuff like that just to layer it so it sounds like bigger all right so that's the b hook um, then it goes into the bridge. And here we 
depth there are, like the analog arc in and the pad. And it's also like, I think it's the same course, but there's playing like... Yeah, they are slower, what you call it, yeah. like longer, to yeah. like get the flow down a little bit, so there will be a bigger transition. Exactly. Instead of like making new course or whatever, it's just like smoothing it out a little bit. Yeah. So that's about it. I think also we have some like ambience guitar down here. Just to like keep the guitars there, but it's like really ambient. Um, and then after that, we have like a little break. into the chorus again but we use it more like the pre-chorus I guess yeah I mean it's more like a build-up towards a b-hook I guess um, so all the elements in here is the same as the first pre-chorus so we're not gonna talk about that more either I mean the last chorus is ex exactly the same as the second one as yeah. well it's just that we have uh, the b-hook going Twice. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a change. It's yeah. kind of like doing continue with the chorus, and then it's like it would be too much of the chorus. So we just yeah. like, okay, let's put the B hook in because it's super catchy. And uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that's actually about it because the song songs we don't have like an outreach is. <laughs> and that's that's. And that's how you make you cry dancing. How you cry and dance at the same time. Hey, what's going on? It's Miles Walker, back with the Noted Boys to work on another tune, Crying Dancing, this week. Uh, very excited to work with the guys on that one. And I was able to add a few little elements in the songs that really helped it out in the final mix. So if you want to check it out, we'll uh, look at those right now. All right, so... Like I said, the drum bus was one thing that I knew the noted guys really wanted uh, some specific sounds on. Namely, because they were really concerned with when the drums kicked in in the chorus, it feeling big and wide, kind of like a stadium feel, stadium claps, and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of different layers of the snare drums and claps working together. Let's take a look at those real quick. When everything kicks in. There we go. So, in addition to the small little clap, we were able to keep that one working on the sides, but the really big one with the big verb tail, I created some fake reverb and really used some crazy out of phase imaging to make it just sound super huge and wide. When printing that back in and then doing like a blend between the two claps, you got a nice fake stadium feel that works really good when the rest of the drums are going together. Some of the percussion shuffle you feel it actually on the sides. So that was one of the things that we really wanted to concentrate on. On the kick drum, you know, just some standard EQ. The sample choice was really great and punchy, but it just needed a little bit more body. So I like the uh, UAD Neve 1073 hitting real low on the filter down at 35. It's not a huge bit of difference, but it's just a little bit more down there to give it some low end pump. And then a little more snap right in the mid range on the beater sound, like around one and a half K and then of course the 10 K shelf just for a little bit of sparkle. Another really key part of this song was all the guitars the noted guys were able to put in there. I know they're really proud of their guitar chops live. Make sure you check them out. And uh, they wanted to work that into this production. It was a lot of layers going, especially in the hook. We can take a look at them all together. Some of the arpeggiated ones a little strum one and as you can hear there's definitely a side chain pump just giving a little bit more room for the kick and stuff like that but with the kick being represented the low end and the snares like we talked about being really wide on the sides i wanted that mid range to cut through right in the middle so what was great was i used a little bit of dynamic eq on a few of the parts to tame some of the lower frequencies and just get that out of the way of the kick and the bass and all the things that were happening but across the bus I put one of my favorite mid-range EQs, which is the Helio 69 from UAD. What's crazy about that is when you boost frequencies in like the one to three K range on guitars, that's usually like the harshest frequencies because it's right in that vocal range. But 
for some reason you can push this one pretty nice even up at 2k and it still sounds smooth so it was really nice to have that extra detail help them cut through but then in order to soften some of the transients i also brought in the la3a which i think is a really nice compressor because even though its attack and release is fixed it lets enough of a transient go through especially on things like guitars where they have a lot but sustains the body so you get a little bit more of the note and uh, you know the rhythm of everything that's going through so with a little bit of that mid-range pump a little bit of that compression i feel like the guitars were able to cut through really nice and not get in the way of the vocal sound really good and then you know when it all comes together you got to take a look at that master bus just to get it under control make a few small EQ adjustments and just get all that detail really dialed in so that when you print the mix down, it's got everything you're looking for. The tune had a lot of high end in it naturally, but uh, some of that was sibilance with the vocal, some of that was the little details in the percussions. So what I was able to do is put a little bit of a multi-band touch going just barely right up at the top, 10K and above, uh, using a little bit of slight dip from the multi-band EQ, but also a little bit of the compression just to catch those little details. I kind of did the same thing down at the bottom on the kick drum, just so you could see the low end working, giving it a little, little punch right there. You don't want to push too hard in either direction because if you're doing too much adjustment with something multi-band on your master bus, you probably have a bigger problem in the actual mix and you should correct it on the multi-track level. But once everything's working together, sounds a little bright, want to get the low end a little punched, I think it's not a bad idea for something like this across that. Another thing to just get some general loudness, I do love the Slate Digital FGX1. It's an old plugin, but it's sure a good one. Um, it's FG level, which is basically a combination limiter and compressor algorithm that they've kind of come up with. Uh, shout out Steven Slate. Uh, sounds really good and doesn't tend to mess with the drums, which is the biggest thing that I find to change when you start doing really aggressive limiting across. So I basically just try and shoot for a decent RMS level around negative 10 when the drop is going and uh, just getting that level to that, that final place. Now on the reference print, the one that's going to go out to the guys to listen to, I might give it a little bit more sauce past that. So I do actually have an ozone on here that's got a final limiter on it. And really it's just there to catch any overs. Uh, it's nice to do a little bit of exaggerated imaging in the upper frequencies above 5k. I just had a slight touch to help it be wide. I was doing that on the multi-track level, like we talked about with the drums but just makes the nice impact when everything comes in in that big final arrangement. But those are really the main touches that I wanted to put on the tune, get it all the way done, but really happy with how it came out. So thanks for checking out all the parts of the mix with me. Shout out to the Noted Boys uh, for letting me work on another record with them. Shout out to Nina Nesbitt on a great top line that I hope you guys are gonna be singing along and um, was happy to get this one ready for your ears. So hope you enjoy it. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Again, if you have any questions or whatever that we didn't go through on any sounds or whatever, just feel free to comment in the comment section down below. Yeah. And we'll try to answer all of you. Yeah. And a big shout out to Nina for the featuring on this amazing song. Yeah. And for writing an amazing song together with Anton and Julia. Exactly. So, uh, and yeah, stream the song. It's one of our favorites. Yeah. So. Big favorite. So, so stream, uh, otherwise yeah. I will only cry. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Peace out.